Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. So I've had this BF30 Super mail from Bernardo for a while now and my plan is to convert it to a CNC mill. But in the process I've had quite a deep look at it and found out a lot about its details. So since there aren't that many reviews of it on YouTube, I thought I'd just go over it and tell you all about it, what it's strengths are, what its weaknesses are, and if you should maybe buy one. Before I get started with the video, I'd like to quickly talk about NordVPN. If you're just browsing the internet from your computer without the VPN, then your ISP is probably spying on you. They are tracking which websites you visit, they can track your location with it, and you really don't want that. So by using NordVPN, you can mask your IP address so that your ISP can't spy on you. They don't see anymore which websites you're on. They can't tell from where you are connecting. So you get your internet privacy back. And the best thing is that you can get 75% off of a three year plan, which brings it down to less than a coffee every month. And you can't tell me that a coffee is more important than your privacy. So check it out at the link below. So to start off, let's talk a bit about the size of this mill. It's pretty big. It has a working area of over 50 centimeters by like 25 centimeters and a whole bunch in C. I I don't know the exact specifications. I might list them on the screen here, but it's that depends on how you measure it anyways. But it's big. And that was one of my main criteria. I wanted a mill that is pretty big since I kind of couldn't decide between a router and a problem mill. And well, I don't know if that was the smartest move, but this is the mill I got. And because of that criteria, I wanted a mill that is big, but I still had to get it somehow into the basement. Now, the best choice would be to get a used bridge port or something like that. And they can be had for quite a decent price as well. But there is no way I'm getting a bridge port down here since they are super heavy and you can't really take them apart that far. So this is how I found this kind of mill. Uh, they're manufactured in China, they can be had from a whole bunch of different brands, Optimum is one of them, Bernardo sells them, and a whole bunch of other brands uh, out there under different names, but they're essentially the same machine. And one of the, well, depending on how you see it, advantages or disadvantages is that none of the single parts of it are that heavy. So once you take it apart to its basically bare pieces, then you can carry it down the stairs or wherever you need to go. Now, it was quite a process to get the mill down here and I covered that in a different video, but that is the reason why I went with this kind of mill instead of a bridge port or something more substantial. And well, the downside of it not being all that heavy is that, well, heavy usually is good in a mill. So it means that you need to have a really sturdy table so that you don't get all kinds of nasty vibrations and stuff. And while this table here is really sturdy I and I could jump around it all day and it won't move, for this mill, it kind of almost is too weak already. I'm probably gonna, once I convert it to CNC, add some major reinforcements to this table to make it even stronger. And so what comes with a great size is a lot of hand cranking. That is, as long as you don't have an automatic feed. If you get the 30 version of this mill, which is the very big one, then if you don't get a power feed, you're gonna crank yourself stupid. Since 50 centimeters of feet with two millimeters every rotation of this hand crank you're going to be cracking for days if you just want to move from one side to the other side to change your work around. So that's why although I'm going to convert it to a CNC so I don't need the power feet anymore later I'm really glad that I got it. The only reason I got it is because the version without the power feet had a smaller table but I'm still glad I got the power feed because it is just so much more convenient. And while we're speaking about hand cranks, I do not like the one on the Z-axis. 
for some reason it is a lot coarser than the other ones. These ones here, they both have 2 millimeters of movement per revolution. But for some reason the Z-axis has 4 millimeters of movement per revolution. And that basically results in very coarse movement if you want, when you turn the hand crank. And it's very difficult to adjust your Z height very finely. And adding insult to injury, it doesn't really stay that well into place. But if you turn it around, it almost pulls it down even further because the he head is so heavy. There is a piston in the back that supports it. It still isn't ideal though, so I'm gonna, I always have to end up locking it with these locking levers uh, when I'm taking a cut so that it doesn't move on me. I really wish that was different uh, with also a 2mm uh, per revolution pitch on this hand crank and maybe a little bit stiffer so that it doesn't move around on me. Now there is a different way that you could adjust your C-height and that is with the quill. This on the one hand is one extra moving part which you might not like but on the other hand it basically also gives you a drill press in your mill. And for things like tapping, it is so good because it's just hand movement. And you can start your tap, you go, you go really slow. This motor goes down to 50 revolutions per minute, which is beautiful for tapping. And you can let it pull in and go back out. Beautiful. That's something that would be kind of hard to do with a mill that doesn't have a quill. There also is supposed to be a fine adjustment knob here. Now I took the knob off, it was still there, but on my machine it just didn't do anything. I guess it was broken in shipping or something. I could go to the manufacturer to get it fixed, but since I'm not going to be using that anyways, I didn't really care that much. Another really handy feature on the quill is this little digital readout. Um, basically, it, it just tells you how far down you go. There also is a scale on here, but this is a lot more precise and very easy to work with. You just go to your starting depth of your hole, you zero it out, and then you can move down exactly how far you want your hole to go down, which is so easy to, to use. And in my opinion, every drill press should have a feature like this. It's just so much easier to use. The next thing I want to talk about is the motor itself. And so to show you more clearly, I'm first going to remove the motor cover here so that you can see what I'm talking about. So what we have in here is a 1.1 kilowatt motor that is geared down a little bit here, but also has a VFD. And the main reason I went with the version that has a VFD instead of the version that has a lot more gears is because I can control a VFD electronically. So once I convert it to CNC, I can hopefully control the speed of the motor with the CNC controller. But if you're getting a mill just for manual milling, there also is a version that where you control the speed through 14 steps with a multi multiple gears, which I guess is fine as well. Here you just have a switch for coarse and fine, which either gives you a range between 50 and 750 RPM, or a range between 150 and 2250. Now for me, I, for milling I'm always in the high speed range. Only for tapping I might go down to the slower speed. At 1.1 kilowatt isn't all that much, but for most of the things I'm going to be doing with this mill, it is perfectly fine. And the mount is rather standard so there's nothing really keeping me from upgrading this motor sometime in the future if for whatever reason it is too weak for me. Another great advantage of the motor only being 1.1 kilowatt is that you can use it with just standard one phase power. No need to get fancy three phase power into your workshop if you don't have it already. And while we're on the topic of the motor, the mount for the different tools is a Morse Taper 3, which on one hand is really common for this kind of machine. It is also common on drill presses, but it is not all that common generally in mills. Now, 
it is a very simple mount. It's just it's a cortical taper with a screw in the end, so you can just insert it. Just insert your tool and then screw it in from the top, which works nice and fine. And and there are tool holders available in very various different ways. You can get ones with ER collets. This one is a really small one. I have a larger ER uh, collet here. This one is ER32, which is gonna allow me to use some rather big tools. And there are also face mills available with this cortical taper. Now the tools I just showed you, apart from the drill truck style, are all purchased from China very cheaply, so they are the best quality. There are some more official Chinese versions uh, that you can buy through the manufacturer. Maybe those are a little bit more accurate, but with these cheap Chinese tool holders, I found that they do have some run out that, depending on which tool holder and which tool you're using, can affect your work. The only other major downside of this uh, tool changer system is that since the taper is rather shallow, they do tend to get stuck in there. So now I, I didn't properly uh, mount this one, so it's probably gonna be fine. It, it, it comes out just fine, but usually but once you properly tightened it, once you loosen the screw, it's not gonna just fall out. It does need just a tap with a hammer on top, so it puffs out. Which is not a big deal if you're just using the mill like this, but my plan is also to automate this for automatic tool changing, and that kind of sticking in there is gonna make it really difficult, so I'm gonna have to get creative with that. And I just noticed I haven't even talked about the table itself. Standard, it just comes with three slots here that are standard for just T inserts, um, I just mounted this vise on here, which is just a machinist's vise. Uh, it works fine. It, it, it can swivel around and is perfect for small work pieces. But it doesn't come with a mill or anything. And if I'm doing bigger work pieces, I'm gonna have to have some other work holding anyways. It also has a uh, drain port in the table. So if you want to add flood cooling to it, uh, that would be a possibility. One other thing I forgot to mention is that for the power feed, it does come with a switch here and some end stops. But I found that once you're going past a certain speed, which in many cases you are, that this end stop switch is really kind of bad actually. Since the motor here takes some time to accelerate and decelerate, it doesn't just stop immediately. So once the switch is hit, it already is compressed a lot and it still moves a little bit further, uh, which causes it to just do all kinds of weird stuff. So I just completely removed the end stops since I'm only gonna use the power feed when I'm at the machine anyways, so I can stop it manually. Uh, it doesn't go off the table all that fast, so that's perfectly fine. I prefer having just clean access here instead of a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't really work all that well. So I think that's covers most of the machine. Now, in the end, I'm just gonna do a couple cuts for you with some different tools that I have. Now, I'm no pro machinist or anything, so take this with a grain of salt. Also, these are all rather cheap Chinese tools, so you might get a better surface finish with some proper tools, but just for you to kind of get a sense of the machine.
So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it and learned something about this machine. If you have any other questions about it, leave them down in the comments and I'm gonna try to answer them all. Or if there are a lot of questions, I might actually make a Q&A video where I answer them. So if you liked it, please leave a like down below. Also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the series where I convert, convert this to a CNC machine. Um, if you want to follow me uh, a little bit closer on other programs, then you can check out my social media link down below. So thanks for watching and until next time.